Around 13.8 billion years ago, an almost incomprehensible large burst of energy occurred. This, of course, is the core concept of the Big Bang Theory, that the universe began from a single point. The nature and source of this single point is not well understood. Some have suggested this initial starting point was the size of a pinhead. But nonetheless, the Big Bang that resulted from this point gave the universe its mass. And that mass has produced everything that we know and see in the universe. All the stars, supernovas, galaxies, cell phones, bad hair days, and yes, even the Kardashians. All of it. This initial burst of energy started some truly amazing things. The first was cosmic inflation, and with that, the universe started to expand, and very, very fast. In the first few milliseconds alone, the universe expanded billions of light years. With cosmic inflation, we also see the expansion of space and time. Did time begin with the Big Bang? That is unknown, but we definitely know it started right at the beginning of the universe. This combination of space and time is often referred to as the space-time continuum. In other words, space and time are thought of as one single idea. And so as the universe expands, so does time. Now, shortly after the Big Bang, the universe was a very, very hot place. Billions of degrees Kelvin. So the young universe was totally dominated by radiation early on. But as the universe expanded, the temperature also dropped, and we will discuss this in a little bit. In the first milliseconds after the Big Bang, some important things occurred. First are the laws of physics. Now, did these laws exist before the Big Bang, or were they created when the universe was created? In any event, here are some of the more important physical laws that cannot be broken. We all know the number one traffic law in the universe. Yep, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. And in case you were thinking of speeding out there in the universe, the speed limit is 186,000 miles per second, or 299,000 kilometers per second. The other major law is the causality principle. This is the principle that cause must always precede effect. So if an event A, which is the cause, somehow influences an event B, which is the effect, then event B cannot in turn have an influence on event A, because B occurred at a later time than A. Well, that's the case unless you own the DeLorean time machine car. There is also the Doppler effect. Waves emitted by a moving object are blue shifted if they approach an observer, and if the waves recede, they are red shifted. The other important laws are the laws of gravity, motion, and thermodynamics, which we will discuss in later videos. Now, the mass in this young universe initially only consisted of elementary particles. The two most important elementary particles are quarks and electrons. In the few minutes after the creation of the universe, protons and neutrons formed, and they were formed out of quarks. Neutrons combined with protons to form the nuclei of hydrogen, helium, and deuterium. This is called nucleosynthesis. Now, it was still way too hot early on for electrons and protons to bind together. But as the universe became cooler and cooler, this process began to occur. This occurred around 387,000 years after the Big Bang. And this process is called recombination. And it is here that charged electrons began to circle the nuclei in protons and neutrons. And this marriage led to the first atoms. These first atoms form the lightest atoms in the periodic table atoms such as hydrogen and helium, two of the most abundant elements in the universe. Also around this time, photons began to decouple from matter. Initially after the Big Bang, matter and photons were coupled together, but now these photons were liberated. And today they are collectively referred to as the cosmic background radiation. It's the discovery and observation of this cosmic background radiation which provides the most direct evidence for the Big Bang. Cosmic background radiation has often been referred to as the afterglow of the Big Bang, as it is nearly uniform throughout the universe. It's also about the farthest we can see back in space-time. The universe was finally habitable around 10 to 17 million years after its creation, but you would have been hard-pressed to stand on anything since stars or planets were not even around yet. So gradually, over millions of years, gravity began to pull hydrogen and helium together. Initially, great clouds of hydrogen and helium atoms were pulled together. The mass for these clouds got bigger and bigger. And after a time, boom, ignition. The first stars were born. These first stars appeared around 100 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. 
A star shines as a result of the thermonuclear fusion of hydrogen into helium deep inside its core. This releases energy that of course radiates into outer space, reaching planets if there are any. And of course this is what led to the first life on Earth. It is also inside stars that we see heavier elements produced. Elements such as carbon, iron, and nitrogen. After the first stars came about, we see galaxies form later on, and this occurred around 600 million to a billion years after the Big Bang. A galaxy is a gravitationally bound system composed of interstellar gas, dust, and of course, stars. And in some cases, a lot of stars. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, has around 200 to 400 billion stars. And galaxies in their own right are very, very large places. The Milky Way is thought to be around 150,000 to 190,000 light years in diameter. So if the first Homo sapiens had somehow been able to develop the technology to travel at the speed of light 200,000 years ago, they would only now be finishing up their epic trip. Now humans love to have a beginning, middle, and end. So if there is a beginning to the universe, why can't there be an ending? These are difficult questions to answer, but there have been some theories postulated. One hypothesis about the ultimate fate of the universe is called the Big Crunch. This theory postulates the universe will eventually come to a grinding halt in its expansion and begin contracting. In this case, it's possible that all matter and space-time in the universe will collapse into a dimensionless singularity, perhaps similar to what occurred before the Big Bang. So if the universe collapses back into a state similar to what occurred before the Big Bang, it's natural to surmise that perhaps many Big Bangs have occurred in the past. And this repeatable version of the Big Bang is referred to as the cyclical Big Crunch. Here, each Big Bang occurs after a preceding universe. It would be impossible to know exactly how many universes have been created and then destroyed. In theory, it could consist of an infinite amount of universes, with each finite universe ending with a Big Crunch. Perhaps each new universe has a different lifespan and even a different set of physical laws. The opposite of the Big Crunch is a universe that will last for an infinite amount of time. The current state of our universe is a rapidly expanding universe. Most galaxies are moving away from our galaxy at tremendous speeds. The heat death of the universe theory treats the universe as one thermodynamic system. If that is the case, and that is a big if, then in the far, far, far future, all of the heat will spread out into a colossal void of space, or a colossal cold void of space. Eventually, all of the energy will spread out into a near nothingness, a dull void where nothing can exist. So the simple way to think of this is all available energy has moved to places of less energy. Eventually it becomes so spread out that no more heat flows anywhere, and thus the term heat death. In other words, the universe is effectively dead, and really what that means is no more chance for life. What a horrible ending. But don't lose your sleep over this since it would take an eternity of time for the universe to descend into this all-encompassing darkness. So here is the hypothetical breakdown of what happens as the universe grows darker and darker. After a trillion years, yes, after a trillion years, the formation of new stars comes to a grinding halt. After a quadrillion years, solar systems are no longer created. Next up on the hit list are galaxies. And then far, 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 far into the future, even protons cease to exist. And the universe by then will have become a very dark, very empty, and, well, just a really boring place. Eventually, only black holes will dominate what is left of the universe, if we can even call it a universe anymore. But even black holes will finally disappear, as Stephen Hawking proved black holes even emit tiny amounts of radiation over time. With the extinction of black holes, only supermassive black holes remain. And yes, finally, even the mighty and once thought immortal supermassive black holes are extinguished. And in case you're wondering exactly how long that would take, a trillion years times a trillion years. Whenever that is. And last but not least, the photons become masters of the universe. Even photons will become more and more diffuse. Is that enough to reach the impossible level of absolute zero? Probably not, but that begs another question. Do photons decay? Currently, it is assumed that photons do not contain any mass, and therefore are truly immortal. But in the slim chance they do contain a tiny amount of mass, then even protons would eventually decay. 
By the way, the heat death of the universe is rejected by a number of cosmologists because they believe you cannot possibly apply the second law of thermodynamics to a system as large as the universe. There is another theory that the universe did not even start with a Big Bang, and that is the bubble universe. Here you want to think of many universes forming like bubbles, similar perhaps to a bubble bath. In this scenario, all kinds of bubbles are formed. Some large, some small, some collide forming secondary bubbles. Further, some universes may be moving away from each other, much in the same way our own universe is currently expanding. So how would we know about these other universes? There is one major problem with detection, and that involves the cosmic horizon. Currently, we can only reach out to around 13.5 billion light years away. And even with that distance, how do we know that that is the edge of the universe? And even if that is the edge, how do we see beyond the edge of the cosmic horizon? That makes it currently impossible to know whether or not there are multiple universes beyond our own cosmic horizon. What was around before the Big Bang? That is a tantalizing question to ponder and may confound us forever. We cannot know for certain what preceded the Big Bang, if in fact there was anything. Some of this relates to the old chicken and egg causality dilemma. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? That is, can the universe create itself out of nothing? Both science and religion have attempted to answer some of these fundamental questions. And while many want to discard either religion or science, it's interesting how in many respects religion and science are attempting to do the same thing. Explain the big picture. Perhaps in the near future, they will work together hand in hand. In the next video, we will examine galaxies and stars and many other objects inside the universe. See you then.